Okay, this is a sequence that has everything. It's got mystery, it's got a simple definition, great music. It's called the inventory sequence. And it was invented by a guy called Joseph Rosenko. And it goes like this. We're gonna build up a sequence. Every so often, we will pause and take an inventory of it and repeat. I'm gonna start off. Here's what we have so far. Blank paper. And I ask you, how many zeros can you see? Zero. So we write down, we have zero zeros. And when we see a zero, we have to take stock again. We take a new inventory because we're missing something. Okay, so now we say, Brady, how many zeros do we see? Huh, I can see one. So we have one zero. Brady, how many ones can I see? Well, I can see one one. So we have one one. How many twos can I see? Zero twos. Okay, when we get to a zero, we have to take inventory again. How many zeros do we see? Two zeros. How many ones do we see? Two. How many twos do we see? Well, we didn't have any, but now we have two twos. So we have two twos. And how many threes do we see? Well, I don't see any threes. We have zero threes. Time to take stock. We got to a zero. How many zeros do we see? One, two, three. Three zeros. How many ones? One, two. And how many twos do we have? Well, we have one, two, three, four twos. Oh, so the inventory is taking stock as it grows as well. Like, yes. Okay, right, yes. Yeah. That's what makes it interesting. And then we keep going. How many threes do we have? Well, I can see one three. So we have one three. How many fours? Well, there's a four. So we have one four. How many fives? Zero fives. We get to a zero. Time to take stock. How many zeros do we have? One, two, three, four. How many ones? One, two, three, four. How many twos? One, two, three, four twos. How many threes? I can only see one. So one three. How many fours? Well, there was one there, but we now have three more. So we have four fours. And how many fives? None. And that's how it goes. The next line, it always starts with N because we will, each row gives us a zero. Now we have one, two, three, four, five zeros. So the first entry of each row is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and so on. And the number of 1s and 2s and 3s grows in a rather irregular way. And if you were to look at a plot, you can see they're in groups. And the groups correspond to the rows, the chunks of the sequence that we're building up. And it always starts with the nth chunk, begins with n, and then, well, it goes up and down. The sequence we're looking at is not just, it's the concatenation, the stringing together of all the chunks. This whole thing is the sequence. And what we're drawing actually is a pin plot officially. There's one other sequence I've seen in the past. This was Jan Ritzima van X sequence that I did a video for you about, the Van X, the famous Van Eck sequence. And I told Van Eck about this, and he made a plot of the first thousand terms, which is very interesting, quite hopeful. Here's his graph. He went out to a thousand terms. His plot just joins successive terms. It's not a pin plot like the first one, but it looks like this. And we always see it plunge down to zero for those inventory moments. When it comes down to zero. Precisely so. Yes. And he noticed that if you look at the upper, the envelope of these points, it's about square root of 2n. In fact, the, this is, it's a famous sequence. It's the sequence that goes 1, 1, 2, 2, 2, 3, 3, 3, 3, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, where each number, uh, 1 appears twice, 2 appears 3 times, 3 appears 4 times, 4 appears 5 times, n appears n plus 1 times. It's, it, and it grows like, very like square root of 2n. And that's what he's drawn in brown here. And you can see it gives you a very good idea of how fast these things are growing for the first thousand terms. And then he did a bigger plot, 10,000 terms, and the brown line is useless. It grows much faster. 
So it's not doing square root of 2n anymore. It's not going square root of 2n. It's way bigger than square root of 2n. It just seems to suddenly leap and then leap again. Like, it does yes. seem... It's odd. It's very odd. It's very irregular and wonderful. So, <laughs> and each clump is a, de a kind of development of the previous chunk. I would like to play it for you. You know, any of the sequences in the OAIS, you click listen and you can hear them. I'm going to play that one on the grand piano for you. Or on a Mac. <laughs> or on a Mac, using GarageBand, yes. As it's going along, we're seeing the chunks, which are the rows of the table. And each chunk begins with a higher and higher, one higher note than the previous chunk. But then they're rather irregular. And if you look at the picture of the, of the, the, the plot of the sequence that Garage Band is actually playing, you can see it's divided up into chunks. And the ch each chunk is a little bit like the previous chunk, but keeps changing. And they also get longer each time. So I think of this as variations on a theme, like Beethoven's Diabelli variations, where he was, Diabelli proposed the theme, and Beethoven embroidered it, produced a series of variations on it. Here, we have the variations, but we don't know what the theme is. gets to the end of a chunk, there's a, a string of low numbers, like the zeros and ones at the end of that, and you can hear them down at the bottom of the keyboard, and then it starts up again. So there's a well-defined notion of chunk, of variations, you could say, except we don't know the theme. see it's getting more interesting as it goes along. There's more variation and you can see it graphically. The sequence gets more and more complicated as you study it and really in the end we don't know that much about it. Um, Remy Segrist made a plot of the first uh, 10 to the 8th terms, 100 million terms, and there's a very interesting structure. This is the same sequence, it's just represented by dots each term is now a dot on the piece of paper. And you can see something very strange is happening. This is a hundred million terms, and we're going along, and the points sort of fall on lines, but the lines cross each other. This is very unusual in this kind of sequence. Normally, the lines get further and further apart as we go along. What's happening here is that the lead is changing. Sometimes there'll be more eights than anything else. The eights will dominate, but then after a while, the nines will take over. There'll be more nines than eights. And then maybe after a while, the eights take over again. And that's why these lines are crossing. And really, this is a really mysterious sequence. It would be nice to know more about it. Do you think there's any value to mathematics in here? I mean, this is a recreational sequence, isn't it? And you've found a, a quirky thing. But do you sometimes think there's some hidden meaning or depth or importance to this? There could be. Maybe not. Maybe so. You know, one of the things that John Conway did was to take what you might say small problems like this and make theories out of them and connect them with other things. And I think that's a very good thing to do. So uh, maybe in itself it's just a sequence. But who knows where it will lead. Now here's a great sequence for you to grapple with courtesy of today's episode sponsor, Jane Street. We've got an infinite pathway with numbered stones, but each stone also has a number like this. We've got one, one, two, two, three, three, four, four. You get the picture. The red numbers indicate the size of the leap you can make from each stone, either forward or back. Can't be more or less, that's the exact size. So how many leaps does it take to reach each stone on the pathway? For example, if you want to reach this stone, well, 
that's going to take five leaps, as you can see. As you aim for stones further down the path, some very interesting patterns and problems emerge. Check out this page on the Jane Street website to dig deeper. While you're there, if you've got a brain for problems and numbers and stuff like this, you may be the sort of person to join Jane Street's genius teams around the world. They've got offices in Hong Kong, New York, London. Check out details on their website. There'll be links in the video description and have some fun with this infinite pathway. Well, there's a choice. We could put the six here. No, no, I can't put it there because that's got neighbor five, four, and one. I could only put a 10 there. Aha, uh -huh. you've got to put them in order, yes. You've got to build your way up. So it's not what's the highest value can I get on the board, it's what's the highest value I can get on the board, building in order. Building in order. 